Okay, today is uh, oops, Saturday, uh, October 10th. I'm up at a little park it's after dark, after sunset. And that's the Slats River. Let's see. Let's see if you can. I don't want to get too far from the car because we got the telescope set up. But this is the Slats River. So we'll zoom in. Oh, that's down. And you wouldn't believe it, but there's Chinook salmon in there coming upstream. Or going downstream. I don't know which way they're going. And we're probably about 10 miles upstream from the ocean. So, uh, the estuary or the tidal influence actually goes about five miles further. So, but anyway, I don't hear anybody coming. Go to take a little look here. It's pretty here. Slots River. Now this river runs right by my where I live. It goes out to the ocean. Hold on. There we go. And as you can see, we got a GPS lock. Well, I don't know if that shows up or not. But uh, for the telescope, I use that for the telescope. Uh, Punch in the uh, latitude and longitude. Oh, yeah. It did show a GPS lock, but it doesn't matter. We got them. Okay. Here we're headed back towards uh, Jim's observatory. Jim's, Jim's U.S. Junkers Observatory, yeah. The car, maybe. The telescope's worth more than the car. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> I'm not lying. This is what they call Celestron Next Star SE8. It's called the Go To. It's a Schmidt Cassegrain optical design. So, what they do is they just, they, they, uh, grind and polish the, the big mirror in the back. Uh, uh, not the small one, the big reflection. The small reflection is the corrector, uh, or the uh, secondary mirror up front. But they grind it to a spherical shape, which is easy. And then, this up front may look open, but it isn't. That's, that's a solid piece of may look like glass uh, but it's a thin piece of glass and it's it itself is polished uh, and shaped in what they call the conjugate of what they call the spherical uh, aberration that would be produced by a spherical mirror alone which would focus along a straight line uh, and the uh, the corrector plate up front uh, exactly reverses it, throws in enough of the opposite distortion so they balance out. They call that a conjugate. But uh, anyway, that's how the opticals work. Uh, and then back here is the scene end. Uh, more opticals. We got a sweet oak because of our back. We need. Let me see. Uh, we got three different finders. <laughs> now I'm gonna turn the uh, the laser on, and you might be able to see it. There we go. As you can see, we got a GPS lock. Well, I don't know if that shows up or not. 
but uh, for the telescope, I use that for the telescope. Uh, punch in the uh, latitude and longitude. Oh, yeah. It did show a GPS lock, but it doesn't matter. We got them. Okay. Here we're headed back towards the uh, Jim's Observatory. Jim's Jim's U.S. Junkers Observatory. Yeah, the car maybe the telescope's more more than the car. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> I'm not lying. This is what they call Celestron Next Star SE8. It's called a go-to. It's a Schmidt Cassegrain optical design. So what they do is they just they they uh, grind and polish the the big mirror in the back. Uh, uh, not the small one, the big reflection. The small reflection is the corrector, uh, or the uh, secondary mirror up front. But they grind it to a spherical shape, which is easy. And then, this up front may look open, but it isn't. That's, that's a solid piece of what may look like glass. Uh, but it's a thin piece of glass, and it's, it itself is polished. Uh, and shaped in what they call the conjugate of what they call the spherical uh, aberration that would be produced by a spherical mirror alone, which would focus along a straight line. Uh, and the, uh, the corrector plate up front uh, exactly reverses. It throws in enough of the opposite Distortion, so they balance out. They call that a conjugate. But uh, anyway, that's how the opticals work. Uh, and then back here is the scene end. Uh, more opticals. We got a sweet oak because of our back. We need. Let me see. Uh, we got three different finders. <laughs> now I'm gonna turn the uh, the laser on, and you might be able to see it. There it is. At night, when it's real dark, you can see the actual beam clear up into the sky. Kind of pretty. Anyway, let's see. Okay, and then this, this this is another type of finder here, which works pretty well. They call it a reflex finder. Both of these, they they're, 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 they don't have any magnification ones. It's straight through one power. But uh, let me see here. Uh, but they're they're easy to find things. I think. At least at first, on the first go around. Let's see if we can see the goody goody. I don't see it. There it is. It's going to be hard. My back can hurt, but there, it's it's there. Trust me. <laughs> Red dot. This one here is hard to see till it gets dark. But this little baby up here, it's called a quick finder, and uh, it works real good. Let me get a picture of that after dark. So we got three uh, finders. Now this is a telescope made for dummies. It's computerized. Uh, <coughs> you can take that hand controller off. Now with me, because I know a little bit about astronomy, I know where two stars are. And I use the two star method where I can uh, 
uh, punch in I go to one star with a finder and then I s uh, line it again with the uh, in the main telescope and punch a line and then I go to my second star and do the same thing and it's supposed to align from that point out all you do is press buttons and the telescope will go to whatever you ever want to look at so it makes it easier for people like me with bad backs uh, and uh, you know, let me see show you how it slews that underneath there is my battery pack uh, Gives you an idea how it slews. The problem is, is it's got eight double A's right in that unit there, so you don't get cord wound around the legs. However, this baby will last all night and then all and so on. Because uh, it's a rechargeable. Whoops, I got a battery going.